Hello, everybody. Drew Duncan for Duncan and Dune Keen. We are here live in Abilene, Kansas. Card and Combat Sports is here. Jake Lindsay is here. Just won by spinning heel kick. Pretty sweet move, by the way. Uh, look, the whole thing about MMA, right, is anticipation. What did he give you during the fight that you were able to anticipate that opening? Well, um, I watched some of his fights, and uh, I, there's not a lot of footage on him. Um, and I could tell he likes to lean down and, and cover up, but when he retreats, he opens, opens up, up like that. So he came out pretty, pretty, can I, can I cuss? Indubitably. Okay. Fuck What's yes. The, okay, then that's my <laughs> new word. Um, and he came out pretty fucking hot to his credit. Um, and he actually caught me with a couple decent shots, like nothing crazy. But I um, started countering him, and I noticed when he would back up, he'd circle this direction, mm -hmm. and he'd back up and elongate out. Guys that move really well do that, and he does. So I hit him with a counter right hand, and then I, I saw him reacting to my forward pressure, so he stood and circled, and then I threw the kick, and he walked right into it, and it landed right heel, right to his lower floating rib, and it's fucking done. Like, your body will seize up. There's no... You can't get up. You're, you're completely... It's, it's non... Um, it's subconscious. You're... You baby, and you're, and you're done, so. You know, to me, that shows symptomatic of being ready maybe for, for the next step. Because, look, not only was there not a lot of footage, but you made adjustments within the fight. So your, your read and reaction is very good, right? It's all about reading that body language. Do you feel like you're ready to go to the next level? Or what, what do you need to progress on to get you there? Dude, I'm I'm ready to roll. People don't. I've done so much MMA. I've had I've been, I've had probably over 40 MMA fights, and I'm so well known for my grappling and my pressure. Mm -hmm. um, I have a very Khabib style: get a guy down, um, grind him out. And guys don't get back up when I get him down. But but people don't realize I have good ass stand up. Right. I kickboxed professionally in Poland um, seven years ago, um, and I was I was fighting guys who had records of like 42 and 7 so like i i, I have really good stand-up my timing is is very well i'm i'm ready to roll i can compete at a very high level in any pure striking sport whatsoever i actually have a bare knuckle fight coming up as well so um i'm ready to roll you know one of the things that hoist gracie talked to me about was strategy and it seems to me like that's what you're all about look there was a point in time when i think before khabib or habib pardon me beat mcgregor that the ground game got booed a lot because a lot of times the fans didn't necessarily understand what they were looking at. He talked about, you know, guys just sitting there duking it out, bleeding it out. And he talked about the strategy and how the ground game is so important. Do you think it is because of Habib beating McGregor that we've come to that point where more of what you and guys like Habib do is respected in MMA? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, that's 100% accurate. Um, Because... Well, because of it's Habib, correct? <laughs> um, because of him and his fight with McGregor, and that's a good point because McGregor brought a lot of fans, a lot of right. casual people to it, and there's nothing wrong with being casual. That um, seeing McGregor systematically broken down like that right. was like, oh wow. And Khabib, Habib, <laughs> um, Khabiba, Habib, he um, and he's and he when he broke McGregor down, dude, he was he was active. He was talking to him. He was right. smoking him. So, yeah, I think it's 100% accurate. Um, grindy, um, smothering, you can't do anything type of grappling is, I think, much more dangerous and respected now. There's less room for error. Right. You know, 80% of fights, here's, here's a stat, 80% of fights go to the ground once. So if you're a guy like Habib and you can control it, it's almost every fight you're going to get on the, you're going to get a guy to the ground and then from that point you're just, you're just winning. So I agree 100%. Yeah. And I think that was it, what you made mention of. I think you hit the nail on the head with the systematic breakdown, right? Because there were a lot of people, you know, my, my counterpart, Time Dune King, said that people show up to watch McGregor win or watch him lose. And the people that wanted to watch him lose saw what a guy like a Habib is capable of. And I think that is what brought the respect factor into that, that, you know, this is a part of MMA too. Right, 100%. Um, there was a guy... If you look at the transition from like, you have guys like Hoist and then you have the, the Mark Hunt and the Mark Kerr, those kind of like right, get a guy right. in his guard and smash. Th th they would get guys down and basically wear them out and beat them up, but not really. Khabib's so, Habib's so active that he can bounce around. 
he's at a point, guys like him are at a point where they can basically coast and just smash guys. Right, right. Like, if you look at the stories of, of him and his training, he'll fight guys a weight class above him and basically spar three or four guys, smoke all of them with grappling and still be fresh. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, I mean that's the name of the game now. If you if you can't if you can't stop a takedown, you can't get up. And if you don't have a nasty guard, you know. Obviously, now you may mention bare knuckle, completely different from what you were just involved in. Uh, going into that, how are you able to prepare for two different types of fights in one day? Well, I mean my boxing again. I, people just don't know this about me. My boxing super clean. My kickboxing super clean. I've been doing combat sports for. 13 years you know my kickboxing rec record is only now it's three and two but i've had i said 40 mma fights i've trained with a lot of high level kickboxers that only kickbox i've trained with boxers you know i'm good with the hands anyway um i think once you get to a point and i train people that's a very important part of this because to get the timing and the natural ability to see things in the moment you have to do a lot of coaching because i watch guys fight and i watch their opponents fight that's one thing that people don't realize it is advantageous to just train yourself and never train anyone else but when I coach I actually learn a lot about fighting and I see openings that maybe I wouldn't have if I just was focusing on myself so I could jump into any combat sport now and com compete at the high level and that's not me being egotistical you can ask anyone I know put me in any sort of combat sports high level jujitsu match I can do fine bare knuckle I'll do fine kickboxing I'll do fine MMA I'll do fine I'll be competent in everything just because I have the experience and I've coached so much in each one of those realms well when you get in there it's just you and another guy so if you don't believe in you who, who the hell else is gonna so there's a thing not to get too serious in the psychological aspect of MMA but this is and anyone who who fights as a professional knows this there's a mental hump that it might take guys eight, nine years to get over. Where when you get in the cage, if things aren't going good, right. a lot of guys will start to go downhill. They'll go, oh shit, oh shit, oh crap. And then the rest of the fight is like this. Right. There's a mental level of strength you get to. And I remember I remember the fight of mine when this happened. You Where you are in a bad situation, but then you're just like, instead of going on that, oh crap, you know, you just stay focused and you push through it. And once you make it past that mental barrier, that, that benchmark of mental strength, I mean, you can, if you have the skill set, you can compete in anything. Well, and hopefully you'll be able to keep the leeches off your back, right? Oh, dude. <laughs> man, I need them. I need them. I'm, I'm super tight in my back, man. <laughs> so Jimmy's been talking about the leeches, huh? The, the leeches, man. He the, loves those the, leeches. The, the, the recovery, Yeah. right? The recovery of the leeches. Look, there's a lot of experimental stuff out there to a lot of different people. And people might go, you really allow leeches to be on your body, oh, bro? Yeah. 100%. Explain to the audience real quick about why you find that as a great way a part of your recovery. Well, so, you know, like with cupping, right? No right. one really knew about it until Michael Phelps did it, and then all of a sudden it became a popular thing. Cupping's really good for recovery. There's another form of cupping called wet cupping. So what they do is they put the cup on your body, right? and it sucks up, and then you take it off, and they make small little cuts, put it back on, it sucks it out. Leeches essentially do the same thing. Right, you, but you don't have to do the cupping aspect of it. A leech's saliva is antibacterial; it's antiviral. Mm. Um, and you, and these aren't leeches, people that you just get out of the lake. Right, whatever. right. These are medical grade leeches, um, and they've been doing this for the last three thousand years in India and in other cultures. Old, you know, these esoteric, um, all natural medical practices. Um, but they they use them and they use leeches in uh, hospitals today in the U.S. Mm. So what they do is they help. They'll pull all that lactic, lactic acid out. They get, they bring fresh blood to the area. Um, it's a little bit, I guess people could, it's a little bit, if you're squeamish, maybe not, but it's super beneficial <laughs> for you, you know? Well, I don't, I don't know what my squeamish level is like, but I guess life or death, maybe I'm going to the leeches. But you no, know? leeches are really, really good. There's also a thing called maggot therapy. Maggots? Yeah, no, 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 just hear me out, hear me out. Everyone just YouTube maggot therapy and you'll learn about it. It's, it's when like, um, like someone who has a wound that won't heal. Right, right. They can, they'll put maggots on there and the maggots eat only the dead flesh and they actually promote fresh tissue, tissue growth. Are you serious? No, 100%. It's super, wow. it's more, it's one of the most beneficial ways to deal with wounds like gangrene and stuff like that. Really? Oh yeah. Gangrene? Yeah. I wonder if, cause I, I don't know if you know about Alex Smith at all, but I wonder if after his surgery, because you know, his leg was almost taken. I wonder if maybe there was some aspect to that. That, that helped his recovery. A hundred percent. Like they will, hospitals will go to this almost as a go-to for like a wound. If they debride it once uh -huh. and put like antibiotics and it doesn't 
grow, like the fresh tissue doesn't promote, doesn't start growing, they'll throw maggots on that bad boy. It's the next day. It'll, it's kind of gross. You get to see him, you know, all that. Coagulate, eat all that YouTube stuff, there. man. And, yeah. But they will, uh, they'll help, they'll help. Uh, you know, I'm into normal stuff too, guys. I like reading books. <laughs> I have two kids. You know, I like having a beer every now and then. Right, you know? right, right. Jimmy likes to focus on the the nose right there. My boy. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about having a beer after this, man. I might actually want to hang out with you and yeah. grab a couple, oh, man. Yeah. We can Absolutely. talk about weird stuff or normal stuff, whatever I'm you want. I'm down for either conversation, okay. to be honest with you, great. man. Great. Yeah, no, actually, great interview, Jake. Thank uh, you very much. Congratulations on your win. Good Thank luck you. on your next Thank fight you. tonight, all right? Much. Everybody, that's Jake Lindsay. I am simply Drew Duncan for Duncan and Doon Keen. And as always, don't you dare touch that dial.